Well, welcome back, everybody. We are here for the second part of today's episode. We have beaten Oxford City in the third, the third qualifying, no, the second qualifying round of the FA Cup. We have been drawn against Cray in the third qualifying round. Cray Wanderers, and they are 21st in the Isthmian League Premier Division. This is such a winnable game. Such a winnable game. They are really struggling. They haven't won yet this season. We have got to be major favourites for that one. And that means we have a brilliant opportunity to qualify for the, the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. Not just with the economic benefits of that, but with an opportunity to reach the first round proper and maybe get a draw against one of those big League One clubs. That would be incredible, but we can't take it for granted. We can't get too excited about it. But what it does mean is that this episode, this two-part episode, has now turned into a triple header. We are going to play three games. So we have got Royston today, top of the table, really, really important clash. And then we are going to stick around and play Cray at home in the FA Cup third qualifying round. So I'm going to try and get the FA Cup out of my head right now because we have got to focus on Royston. You can see they have won six and drawn one of the first seven games of the season. They are five points clear at the top of the table. And now ourselves with games in hand... We have got to win this to go back into second place. Really, really important. Needham Market, who beat us in our last league game, are now second. So they are going very strongly. Uh, we are under real pressure to get a result here. And you can see, if you look down the bottom, Bromsgrove Sporting, who won our league last season, they did not go up. I didn't realise they had to go through a playoff as champions. They lost in the playoffs, as did St. Ives, and they are now 15th and 17th in the league. So it shows you just how competitive this league is, how difficult it is to get out, and how much your team can change if you don't manage to get promotion. So really, really important, especially with the quality of players and the financial situation of the club. We have got to get out of this division. So... What I don't want to do is allow Royston to get away from us early on. So we are we are under pressure to get a result away from home here. Let's get into this and let's see what we can do. I have made a couple of changes. Um, so at the back, Ferry is going to keep his place in goal. Richardson, Mepp and Walter, Warburton and Williams are the defence. That stays the same, but in midfield, I have brought in Hazeman on the right-hand side of those three central midfielders. He has got Waddington's place. He is a huge, huge upgrade on Waddington. Um, if we can get him fit, he can be the dominant midfielder of our division this season, I'm sure. We've got Jack Brown in the number 10 position, and partnering Brown Sterling up front, is going to be Thomas Hughes for his league debut. Obviously came off the bench and scored in the FA Cup. We now want to see him produce a little bit of that same magic here. So he is going to be playing as... Uh, what is this position defined as? Let's have a look. A deep lying forward. There you go. I keep forgetting stuff. He's a deep lying forward. I think really suits his technical ability. Um, it's going to help him get assists for Brown Sterling, but also far enough up the field to uh, hopefully get involved in the goals as well. So that's the team we're going with. On the bench, Jim Fenland, Collard, Waddington and Parks with that amazing free kick ability. Ravi Shamsi for if we want to change formation. Then Eric Bugarin and Coolthurst, the Shack attack are our two striking options on the bench. So Hazeman still not match fit, but I think with his performance off the bench in the FA Cup, the importance of this game, I think he's worth a start 
if we can get at least 60, 70 minutes out of him and hopefully by that stage have the game wrapped up, I think that would be absolutely ideal. We did beat Royston, you remember, away from home last season, towards the end of the season, when they were going pretty well. We managed to get the win over them with a very, very good performance. I'm going to tell them to carry on from where they left off. So if we can produce that same sort of performance again here and kind of, uh, kind of stop their momentum, that would be absolutely superb. In our division, teams do tend to go through spells of poor form. Nobody last season really dominated. And it was Bromsgrove Sporting that hit form right at the end of the season. So I'm not expecting anybody to sort of pull away and just be uncatchable. But it would be nice to get that win here. We would have a game in hand on them and it would be down to three points. And at this early stage, that would give us the chance to try and assert ourselves again after our early slip up as they get the first highlight of the game 26 minutes in. This is not looking good right now. Dangerous position. And they will get the cross in. Ah. And Harvey Sparks puts us behind with the first chance they have had in the game. Back post cross. Williams, who should be very good in the air, is done all ends up. And it's a perfect header. From their first, well, it says their second shot of the game. Come on, boys. Let's sort this out. We are the better team, you can see, as we now get a free kick. And Hughes forcing a great save out of the goalkeeper. From that range, it was a very good effort. We're now going attacking as O'Hara puts the corner in. And that's headed wide. But hopefully now, we can push on from that. And we need to get back into this game very quickly. Williams into Brown Sterling. And there's Heyman. Not really any forward options. But Brown finds Hughes nicely. And again, they it's put in for Brown Sterling. But he couldn't get onto it. And they now get the break. I would like this highlight to end now. But it's not going to. Please don't do this again. Williams wins it back nicely. Heyman into Brown. Can Brown finish? Straight at the goalie. And again, we have got memories of last season. A game we are dominating really in terms of the chances. But we are behind and very lucky not to be too behind. Heyman is already pretty tired. Well, they've had some chances at the end of the half to kind of even things up. So I guess we can't complain. We're better than this and we all know it. Come on. And at the moment, nobody is really reacting to the team talk. That was a little bit better. What else can we change tactically here? Do I want to go even wider still? Do I want to... I'm going to get stuck in. We've only got the one book in and we haven't really been competing physically. I don't want to change too much more. Let's just change it onto their formation when this highlight finishes. Jamie O'Hara again trying to find Brown Sterling. Those... Balls over the top are not working, but Hughes has got in and he's made it two in two for the season. A goal on his debut in the FA Cup, a goal on his full debut in the league. And are Hughes and Brown Sterling perhaps about to develop into a very potent part partnership that could shoot us to glory this season? Nice to see Brown Sterling get an assist there. Let's just. Change it on to Royston's formation. Let's try and encourage the players here. We are the better team. But right now, it is anybody's game. Heyman 
He's had a decent game. Maybe not exceptional, but he has been good as he gets another chance to put the ball in. And Demalio Brown-Sterling has turned provider on both goals here as Jack Brown puts us ahead. Great comeback performance here. Really important to get the result today. Really put pressure on Royston and really get our momentum back after dropping those five points in our last two league games. Let's praise the players. There we go. Let's get some smiles on faces and really get the confidence up. We've dominated this second half and here we come again. Hughes with a good debut performance. And we get it back. Jamie O'Hara has also had a decent game there. He's been prodding and probing with that great passing ability that he has. Jack Brown couldn't get a shot away. It's got to go out wide, surely, to Warburton there. Still looking for the ball through. Jack Brown, he does now find Hughes. That is a lovely move. Great through pass from Jack Brown. Jack Brown was worried when Hughes was signed that he might lose his place in the team. Absolutely no chance, son. They now get that away and will that be the end of that highlight? It is. We've just got to hold on for another 15 minutes as they get a highlight again now. They have not been in it in this second half. I really hope we don't cave here as Richardson wins it back. That's very nice. Hughes again, and I think Brown very, very tired. I think it might be time to make a change. Get Jack Brown off and try and shore this game up defensively as they get in. But again, it's well dealt with. And Brown Sterling having a brilliant game just pulls that down out of the air. Absolute class. Forces the save out of the keeper. And we can't do anything with the corner there as they now get a break. Heyman, just with a nice little professional foul just to slow down their momentum. Let's just make some changes here. We have got a lot of tired players on the field. I'm going to bring Heyman off for Waddington. And I think Jack Brown is going to come off for Jordan Parks. And what I am going to do is just knock James back to a defensive midfield position. Yeah, he can he can just about do that. And I'm going to bring Parks into the middle here. Actually, I am going to put Parks out wide and Jamie O'Hara as a deep line playmaker. And Parks, I think I'm going to use him as the Masala just to give us a little bit more width maybe. Do I want to make another change here? Kingsley James is very tired. Jamie O'Hara is shattered. I think I am going to leave it at that right now. Maybe just make the change for Thomas Hughes. We've got 10 minutes to go. I'm going to bring Thomas Hughes off. Bring on the Shack attack. Let's bring him on as the pressing forward. And do we now stop with our overlaps? I think we do. We're just going to start to slow things down. Hold our shape there. And I'm just going to bring our line of engagement down a little bit. Just to make us a little bit more compact. We will start to time waste in a few minutes. But not just yet. As we make our three changes. We have got a very tired team out on that field those changes were definitely necessary but we are holding on right now let's start some time wasting here and we're going to play for set pieces with parks being on the field as they now get a highlight and this would be typical of us wouldn't it come on boys hold on here come on well done williams blocking that out Brown Sterling doesn't go and press, which would have been nice to see, but it's still not dealt with. And this is totally on brand right now. I want to see us see this game out. 
as Brown Sterling looks for the shack attack. He can't get in there. But now I thought Brown Sterling might get in on that. It's still not dealt with. This is a very long highlight. Warburton will get to that first. Ferry on his league debut as well. He's done okay, but as... Oh, my goodness. Oh, it was so predictable. No, it was disallowed. Thank goodness, I had my eyes closed. I had my eyes closed in absolute disbelief. Thank goodness for that offside call. And it was a, it was a very nervy one. But we do see it out. We have got the three points. And I'm going to tell them that was an excellent win. It, it really was. We might not have done it exactly in style. It wasn't the most comfortable of victories. But we have managed to get those points. That's the important thing. We've put ourselves back in a position where we can now really try and take hold of this league. I know I said that a lot of times last season. But I do feel like we're a different animal now. You can see we've got two two games in hand on Leamington, who I think came down um, from Vanarama North or South. They are looking pretty good as well. But we do have two games in hand. And if we win those two games in hand, we would be five points clear of Leamington. So Colville are going well as well. I mean, it, it's, uh, it is a pretty tight start to the season. Nice to see Brown Sterling getting some assists there. Uh, let's see now. We are going to move forward. Send my assistant to do the press conference again. We're going to move forward to this next game in the FA Cup at home against Cray Wanderers for a place in the fourth round. We'll see you back very shortly for that next game. Welcome back. We are back for the third of our triple header in today's episode. We are taking on Cray Wanderers in the third qualifying round of the FA Cup. We are hot favourites, I would think, for this game. A real opportunity to make the fourth qualifying round, bring in some much needed cash for the club as well. And uh, we are going to stick with the same team. But before we get into the game, I want to just show you, we have got a major sign-in on the cards. Jamie Stott has been on trial with us, 24-year-old centre-back. He was playing the last few seasons in the Vanarama and the Vanarama North. He's also played League Two, a very, very accomplished centre-back. And he had an offer from us and from Vanarama National League Bromley. And for some reason... He has accepted our offer. He prefers to come to us than go and play in the Vanarama National League with Bromley. And if we compare him to Courtney Mepp and Walter, you can see here he is the better player, undoubtedly. Better technically. He's got good heading ability. Brilliant jumping reach on his physicals. He's also pretty strong, got good stamina. And uh, mentally, he is as good as Mepp and Walter as well. You might say he's better in terms of the important things like composure, the anticipation, the aggression that you want in a centre-back. So I think we are going to confirm this deal. I've got it on hold right now, but uh, tomorrow it will come back up and I'm going to confirm it. And I think what that means is that Courtney Mepp and Walter, who only signed in the summer, is going to be on his way out. He has done uh, pretty much okay since he's been in, but he is not as good as Stott. And I am paying him £375 a game, plus a £60 clean sheet bonus. It's a huge contract at our level. So I think I need to do it because right now we are kind of nearly £370 a week over the wage budget and uh, we are going to make back 175 if we do this deal. I think Stott is only going to make £25 a game uh, clean sheet bonus as well. 
So just everything adds up. I think it may be a very short-lived time at Rushton and Diamonds for Courtney Meppen Walter. But um, he is going to play today. This FA Cup game against Cray could be his final appearance for the club. Um, yeah, it's maybe a little bit harsh. He hasn't done badly, and you could argue he hasn't really had the time to prove himself. But you can see, of our starting lineup, he he, he does have the worst average rating of everybody. Um, he's almost got the worst average rating of the whole first team squad, including subs. But um, that's the, that's the big news. But we are going to get into this game. Let's get this game out of the way. Let's get into the fourth qualifying round. We are going to keep the same lineup from the Royston game. And uh, hopefully Hazeman, with that little bit of extra fitness from playing last week, is now going to be ready to play a full game, hopefully, and, uh, and, and really start to dominate for us. So... Big pressure, but I think we can do it. I mean, Cray have just been on such poor form in the Isthmian League. I think it really seems set up for us to do well. Just being at home, let's uh, really try and get these players up for it. Jack Brown and Matt Richardson, the only ones to react straight off. Now getting a little bit more out of the other players. And this is this is actually very good. They're well up for it. Let's get into this game. Let's see if we can make it three wins out of three for this episode. And you can see it looks like a big FA Cup crowd as well. Cray are playing a 4-4-2, which again really suits us, although they have started the better. We've had a couple of shots now. They have still had a little bit more of the possession, which is unusual. Usually we do get the better of the possession. Can that creep up as we go on, as we get a three on three at the back? And Brown just sets, sets Brown Sterling up for the simplest of one-on-ones. Blasting it over the bar, and that is a real chance miss. But then Brown gets Hughes straight back in. And Thomas Hughes now has three in three. He's just an absolute magician at this level. What a bit of class. I'm so glad I went through with the, the, the deal for Hughes. It put us well over budget, but it was absolutely worth it. And this looks like if we can win here, this looks like it could be a big crowd, bring in a decent amount of gate receipts. You can see the fans in the stands there. The away fans have packed it out as well. So if we can get a good amount of gate receipts and at the same time get some good prize money it was uh it was uh nearly three and a half thousand pound prize money in the second qualifying round so i can imagine we're now getting into pretty decent amounts for winning in the third qualifying round as they come forward i shouldn't get ahead of myself should i we're maybe a bit lucky to get away with that i hear i am speaking about prize money and we haven't got this game out of the way. We're only 25 minutes in. As Brown Sterling now goes in again. And I'm not sure that was a penalty. But Jamie O'Hara will accept it by all means. And he's missed it. Unbelievable. I could have had Hughes on it. Oh dear. And I hope that doesn't come back to bite us. Come on. Let's. Get these boys going. Come on. They don't want to be encouraged again. I should know better as to not encourage this team. They really don't take kindly to being encouraged. And please don't let them get back in at half time. Oof. They've had a couple of good chances. We have to say that. I think, um, yes, we've missed a penalty. But let's tell them to uh, just don't get complacent. All right, most of them have reacted well. Let's just tell Jack Brown and King James that they're doing well. Let's see if that... Okay, that that's kind of saved the situation with them. And I'm actually going to go to set pieces in case we do get another penalty. And this is strange. Now, 
No, there it is. So I want to move Thomas Hughes as the penalty taker. All right, there we go. So if we do get one in the second half, Thomas Hughes is on it. They both have, I think it's 13 penalty taking. I wasn't paying attention. They know they both have the same penalty taking. So if we get the next one, hopefully Hughes can be on that because uh, O'Hara has missed a couple in his Rushton and Diamonds career. So let's now get focused on this second half. Can we get the second goal? Put this game to bed. Brown has been absolutely dominant. He set up so many chances. Brown Sterling really should have done better than he has today. Can he do better now? He can. Goal number 10 of the season for Demalio Brown Sterling. And this time it's Hughes getting the assist, but Brown involved again. And that's why we switched to this two striker formation for this season, just to try and get that into play in down the middle of the field and Cray have had a few shots they've had good possession but they haven't got any shots on target I think you can probably see there why their season is going so badly they don't seem like a bad football inside and Mepen Walter still doesn't know that he's probably playing his last game for the club here as he wins another one in the air there he has played well in these three games today as Hughes now misses a great opportunity. Really should be more than two. I think nobody could begrudge us three or four here right now at the very least. The amount of one-on-ones and the penalty and now Brown heads over. A really good performance and it really seems like we're putting those two games where we didn't really turn up in the league we put them behind us as Heyman has a good good effort from outside the area there all right I think we're going to make a change for Williams Williams is very tired now we've got Fenlon on the bench be good for him to get some minutes as well just to stop him feeling that he's not being considered he does have higher level teams interested in him as well as Hughes now gets Brown Sterling in again, and that finishes it right there. 3 0, 2 for Brown Sterling, a goal and two assists for Hughes. Absolutely dominant today. What a sign in. His technical ability is just phenomenal. At our level, I cannot believe we've been able to get a player of his quality along with the likes of. Hey, uh, Hazeman and, and Jack Brown, absolutely sensational, sensational players for our level that just allow us to play such a good style of football. Jay Williams, who's had a great game, he'll come off for Fenlon. A deserved rest for him. Now, who else do I want to change out here? I think we might just bring off... I don't, I don't know who else I want to bring on here. I think we could change the two strikers out. We've got 20 minutes left. I mean, they've both got their goals today. I think I'm going to change both strikers. On comes Bouguerin, the Spaniard, and the Shaq attack. Shaq Coolthurst? Cool Coolthard, I keep wanting to say. Shaq Coolthurst. Again, let him get on. And get some minutes, maybe get a goal, which would be nice. And we've managed to rest our two most important, most informed strikers for the last 20 minutes of the game. And we come on now with another highlight ball into Bougarin. He can't get a shot away, can call thirst, goes back to James. And Jamie O'Hara, since we've switched him to a deep line playmaker, is absolutely sensational and Bougarin should have finished there 13 finishing it just had to be dinked in I think Cray are so lucky they haven't been on the end of an absolute hiding as Coulthurst now blasts one over showing his five composure what a performance that we can miss those chances and I can still be happy 
I don't think anybody could have begrudged us six or seven goals in this game. We have been that dominant. Fantastic performance. Sensational last three games. And we are into the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. Got to be happy with that. I really think that was our best performance of the season, despite the level of the opposition. Wonderful, wonderful performance from the two strikers and from Jack Brown. Those three are absolutely sensational. And when do we come back now? If I look at the schedule, so... Now, it says here, so that's the FA Trophy. Okay, the FA, FA Cup fourth qualifying round. I know it's only three games away, but I've got to come back for it. I think maybe we might just do, we might just do a, maybe a double header. The FA Cup fourth qualifying round and then Leamington, who are going really well in the league. That could be a good next episode, but I definitely need to come back for that FA Cup. If we should happen to get another home draw against a, de uh, uh, not a decent side, but a, a, a winnable game, I think that would be absolutely awesome. F five and a half thousand pounds goes really, really well, really well received into the coffers. We have obviously been struggling to keep the financial situation under control. Got to be pleased with Brown Sterling there. Um, what does that do for the finances? So that has really, really helped along with the gate receipts. The two FA Cup games have bought us from from uh, over a hundred thousand in debt. To you can see there, we are we are about thirteen and a half thousand or more, more than thirteen and a half thousand in the black for this month. Um, obviously, we've only just started October, but we've We've basically brought things down by nearly 20,000. That has really, really helped the FA Cup run. And if we can have a similar run in the FA Trophy, that would be absolutely huge. So um, we're going to leave it there. Next up will be the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. I still don't know who that will be against. We will leave it there and uh, I will see you guys back for the next episode let's see if this run can go on and if maybe we can get a huge first round proper away game against a monster league one side that would be the ideal bye for now